Central Texas children. They're helping out doctors understand a rare illness. This strikes after a COVID-19 infection. Yeah, Dell Children's is now part of the first international study that's going to look at the long-term impact of the inflammatory syndrome in kids. KXAN investigator Arzo Dose explains the study is also going to focus on why it's disproportionately impacting black and Hispanic children. The Delasandros are grateful for this moment. Their son Nico walking out of the hospital last weekend. Just a few days earlier, he was being rushed to Dell Children's Medical Center. I knew something was wrong with him, especially when he got the 104.4 fever. I noticed that he was not really responsive. His parents say the 13 year old from Round Rock was diagnosed with multi system inflammatory syndrome in children or MIS-C. His tongue was very white. His lips were very red, very cracked. Uh, if you notice the bloodshot eyes with the white band around the iris. The family says they all got COVID-19 right before Christmas, and Nico had a light fever and not much of an appetite. They say only a few weeks ago, his symptoms got worse. It was heartbreaking, and also you kind of feel guilty for not knowing about this. The illness can cause inflammation to different body parts. What worries doctors is the impact on the heart. And how long will that last? And are there groups of children that are at greater risk? Dr. Sarmista Hager on the right is the chief of pediatric infectious disease at Dell Children's. And Dr. Karen Hasbani on the left is a pediatric cardiologist there. Both hope to get those answers and learn more through an international study that will analyze data from 600 children in our area, across the country, and Canada diagnosed with MISC. The more information we know about the disease, the better treatment plans we have, the more we know about the risk factors. The doctors say they've treated 36 children with MISC at Dell Children's. 50% have ended up in the ICU. They also say more boys are diagnosed that are about 12 years old, and a majority are either black or Hispanic. They are being exposed more to COVID than the rest of the population, and so it's not yet clear if they're, they have straight risk factors putting them at higher risk or there's just simply exposure. That's why you need a lot of places to put the data in to see as, you know, is this the same thing that you're seeing up in Minnesota versus New York versus Texas versus Hawaii. The study will closely watch children over the next five years. Nico's family says they've given permission to be part of it. If it helps someone else, for sure, we want to be involved. They say Nico is back to himself, but will need regular checkups on his heart. They're thankful to have caught it all early. If we wait a little bit more, we don't know what the outcome of Nico's, uh, this syndrome will be for Nico. Arzo Dost, KXAN, investigates. I'm glad Nico's okay. Uh, parents, you do have to consent to be part of the study. Patients' names are not going to be used, only the age and demographic information from this study. It is federally funded and includes 29 other leading children's medical centers. The doctors you heard from in Arzo's story say the best thing parents can do is continue to encourage good hand washing, social distancing, and masking when it comes to your kiddo. And if your kid does have a high fever, fatigue, abdominal complaints, a rash, red eyes, swollen hands and feet, call your doctor immediately. The state health department says there are 54 confirmed missing cases, 15 here in central Texas. One death was reported in October from the San Antonio area and breaking down the state's numbers, a majority of the cases have also been in boys and include Hispanic and black children. It takes the state several weeks to update confirmed cases after getting that information from hospitals and then go through it. It also needs to confirm it through its own process.